welcome to the latest Stockhouse Investor Video Podcast, where you get up-to-date information on the sectors, the trends, and the companies that are competing for your investment dollars. I'm Dave Jackson. Environmental sustainability, while maintaining profitability and shareholder value, are the hallmarks of any modern forward-thinking company. This is especially the case in the critical mineral space. Avalon Advanced Materials is a Canadian mineral development company focused on metals and minerals for use in clean energy and new technology. Avalon's extensive experience with critical minerals and commitment to sustainability puts the company in a unique position to utilize its resources and expertise in extraction techniques to establish new critical mineral supply chains in North America. Avalon has three projects in advanced stages of development, providing investors with exposure to lithium, cesium, tantalum, indium, tin, and the rare earth elements. Avalon Advanced Materials trades on the TSX under the symbol AVL. Today, we're excited to be joined by company president and CEO, Don Bubar. Thanks very much for joining us today, Don. Pleasure to be here, Dave. Well, to start off with, uh, Don, can you update our investor audience and your AVL shareholders on any new, com- uh, any new company developments, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, mainly we've been trying to move forward with our uh, lithium project for obvious reasons. That's where a lot of the uh, interest is right now. COVID has meant we haven't been able to do as much work on the ground as we might have wanted to uh, a year ago. But we've been moving forward in the labs on terms of defining our process flow sheet and preparing to recover the bulk sample that we had planned to do uh, last year to go ahead with that program to prove up our flow sheet and start making samples of the lithium mineral products for the customers that have already expressed interest and start to move forward with other markets for the uh, lithium. So that's been our main focus and we should have more developments to report on that before too long. Okay, now Don, we understand you've been spending a lot of time educating the public and government on how different a business production or how different a business producing these non-traditional commodities is compared to traditional mining. Can you elaborate on this and why is it so important? Well, it all started two years ago when uh, the government of Canada and the U.S. agreed to um, uh, work together on creating these new critical mineral supply chains in in North America and reduce our reliance on uh, China. And so governments have been thinking about uh, what they need to do to um, create needed policy initiatives to enable that to happen. And um, they've needed some help with that. There's not a lot of uh, expertise in that area in government circles and experience with this. So people like me that do have that experience have been um, pulled into the conversation quite frequently to provide some guidance and support on uh, what needs to be done to enable these supply chains to be uh, be created. And uh, they definitely need to realize that this is not like traditional mining of exchange traded commodities. It's a very different business in terms of the challenges and getting it started. Like I just described, you've got to start taking bulk samples, producing product samples, and get it accepted in the market before you can prove you've got um, an opportunity to develop a larger scale operation. Now, the company is expecting an environmental, social, and governance rating announcement in late January. Can you explain the significance of that, Don? Yeah, that's uh, something that uh, we've factored into our um, strategy for a long time in that we, I always felt that if you're gonna produce materials for clean technology, it didn't make any sense to do it in an unclean way. And now that a lot of the consumers of these materials in uh, clean technology audit their supply chains back to the original sources of supply to make sure they are produced in sustainable ways, <clears throat> it makes sense to develop a whole strategy uh, around that, which we have done. For a long time, it didn't get appreciated by the um, growing uh, ESG investment Mm -hmm. community. But over the last couple of years, there's been this realization that uh, 
this clean, green world where we're no longer relying on fossil fuels won't happen without mining of the critical minerals needed in those new renewable energy technologies, electric vehicles and battery technologies. So that's um, <clears throat> creating a, a whole new opportunity. And the ESG investment community now want to find companies that meet their criteria in that space to invest in. So that door's wide open for us now with that new risk rating when we get that in place. Now, Don, you noted uh, in your recent president's letter that according to a 2020 World Bank Group report, minerals for climate action production of battery materials, most notably lithium, will have to increase by nearly 500% by 2050 to meet the growing demand for clean energy technologies. How is Avalon leveraging itself to meet those needs? Yeah, so the whole battery material space is um, one that's starting to get a lot of traction here in Canada now and Ontario as the government wants to build capacity for battery manufacturing battery manufacturing here along with electric vehicle manufacturing capacity. So the time has come to create that upstream supply chain. And um, there's a huge opportunity in both Quebec and Ontario to do that in that there are lots of lithium resources in the ground. Companies like us have needed a refinery to be able to ship the concentrate to that where it could be turned into the battery material product, lithium hydroxide or lithium carbonate. So we've um, agreed to collaborate with another aspiring producer in Ontario, RockTech Lithium, to get a, such a refinery established in a central location, Thunder Bay, with good transportation infrastructure, to hope, hopefully get that whole supply chain now started here on in Ontario and be able to grow it over time by accepting concentrates from other aspiring new producers uh, in Ontario and elsewhere in Canada. Can you walk us through and update us on the LOI with Rock Tank Lithium to develop a lithium refinery? Don, this sounds exciting. Well, we wanted to, to have some collaboration. It is a, a fairly expensive proposition to build a refinery like that. You're looking at several hundred million dollars in uh, capital requirements. So be able to share the cost uh, helps. And then um, there are different markets that can be served. And uh, Rock Tech are developing uh, relationships in the downstream marketplace in Europe to serve. And we can serve North American markets and uh, we can see lots of opportunity to kind of share ownership and to develop the markets uh, internationally and domestically for the battery materials. Plus, we want to keep it uh, flexible in terms of what products we'll produce down the road because lithium battery technology continues to evolve and the, the needs of that marketplace are going to change over time, then we want to be able to um, adapt to that going forward. Avalon has really been ahead of the game when it comes to relationships and partnerships with First Nations. How have you created this win-win scenario here, Don? Well, I think the, uh, the this whole lithium um, development opportunity is a good example of um, where the future can be here. We've been trying to inspire First Nations to get more actively involved in mineral development in uh, Northern Canada as a way to increase participation in the economy generally. And these new critical mineral supply chains are a, a very good opportunity in that, in that many cases doesn't require the huge amounts of capital that are typically associated with a large base metal or gold mining uh, operation. Often the environmental footprint can be quite a bit smaller. So being able to start to do this on their own through their own indigenous business corporations is uh, very feasible now. And we hope to be able to inspire that in Ontario by getting this um, refinery going that uh, future producers of lithium minerals in the indigenous communities can start to serve. It would be remiss of me not to mention that your stock has had a very nice bump over the last six months, Don, nearly tripling in value since early August. What can you tell our investor audience regarding the current valuation of your stock 
and frankly, why you think it's still a good value buy right now? Well, it's basically been getting um, some traction because of the interest generally in the whole uh, critical minerals space and both rare earths and lithium because we've been in this uh, space for 25 years now, believe it or not. So we're well known as one of the players in the space. And even though we haven't had a lot of uh, news flow, people are anticipating that we will be uh, having some before long. And I think um, um, it's a good time for investors to look at our company because a lot of our peers in the um, lithium space now have achieved uh, quite a bit higher valuations than, than where we're standing right now, and including our friends Rock Tech, seen their stock climb quite dramatically in the last little while, up to over 300 million. We're sitting at uh, a little over 50 million, so we've got quite a bit of upside there, I think. No doubt. Well, it's a great segue into my next question for company shareholders um, and potential investors. What kind of development can we expect moving through 2021 on your properties? Well, we're really uh, focused on our um, lithium project for now to get that uh, up and running. That's our most advanced uh, project right now. But we haven't forgotten about rare earths, and uh, we see other opportunities now and uh, to bring a new rare earth supply to the marketplace by looking at situations where they occur in historic mine waste, where we can look at those sites as opportunities to extract value from the waste and remediate some of the existing long-term environmental liabilities at those sites. We're looking at a really interesting one right now in that space, and that's another priority for us is to um, be able to participate in another rare earth development opportunity. Well, thanks again, Don, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today here at Stockhouse. If there's anything else that I've missed that you'd like to further add, please feel free. Well, I mentioned lithium and rare earths. Those are not the only uh, uh, critical minerals we're looking at now. We're seeing really good opportunities with two other ones, cesium and tantalum, mm -hmm. very short supply. We've got a project we've had for 20 years in Northern Ontario that uh, called Lilypad that has a very attractive uh, resource there with high enrichment in both cesium and tantalum. And we think it's time has come and I'm open to accelerate development there in 2021 as well. Great stuff, Don. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Be well and stay safe. My pleasure. Pleasure was all ours, sir. Now we have indeed been speaking with Don Bubar, President and CEO of Avalon Advanced Materials. I'd like once again to thank Don for joining us and sharing his helpful and insightful information about his company with our Stock has Video podcast listeners and investors. And as always, investors are reminded to do their own due diligence before making any investment decision. I'm Dave Jackson for Stockhouse Media and the Stock Talk Metals and Mining Sector podcast. Thanks for watching.